Hi, morning everyone on this fine Friday morning, wherever you are. Um, we're here today to talk about AI and the future of public relations with Amy. Can't wait to hear all um, of this, to be honest. She's such a big expert in this area, so I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> no pressure there, Amy. Um, I'm going to run you through a poll as normal, just to say I'm on chat. Please like ask us any questions. Um, you know, that's great. Um, and, uh, you know, we can always put questions to Amy at the end. Uh, the video will be available later. And also um, I'll make the handout um, more available and pin it to the top of the chat. So, yeah. Um, good morning, Carol, as well. <laughs> One of our regulars is here. Nice to see you. Uh -huh. So, right, let's go through the polls because it's good to just get to know the audience and you can put anything in chat that you'd like to as well and we can you know, get going on this. So, okay. How much of your role is writing copy? Um, is it a significant portion of your role? It's some of your responsibilities. It's very little or like not part of your role really and or you just firmly don't have a role involving copywriting. So it's good just so we get that information. Okay, it's looking quite 50-50 at the moment. Oh, no. Okay. I, I, should never, I should always leave it a bit longer, you know, because it just... 38% <laughs> you know, are saying a significant portion. 54% are saying some of my responsibilities. It's just mm. moving again, but I'm just going to go for it. 7% uh, are saying very little or none. And it's 0% saying, um, you know, they don't have a role involving um, copywriting. So the people here you know have the experiences of it so that's good good to know so right we'll go on to the next one okay are you using pr for your business yes extensively yes to some extent no not currently or i'm not sure I'm trying not to comment, I'm just waiting for a few more people. <laughs> I know, you're being very oh, good, Katie. It's a broad mix. It's a broad mix. <laughs> 24%, yes, extensively. 52%, yes, to some extent. 13%, uh, no, not currently. It's moved again, and now it says 13%, I'm not sure. So, yeah. Okay. okay. So, yeah. And of course, oh, copywriting yeah. is a, a quite a broad spectrum of things, isn't it? It's yeah, definitely. An yeah, article yeah. of social media post through to, you know, a press release, which we're going to be talking about in more detail later. Um, you know, there's a, a range of things that encapsulate that word copywriting. So, you know, think about that perhaps when you're answering the poll. <laughs> And I, I think with all these things, I mean, uh, no spoilers from my um, perspective, but it's a case of, you know, it, it, there's in um, technology, there's always things that come in which can aid you, but it's it's actually making the right decisions with it, isn't it, as well? So I'm really looking forward to this one. I'm going to sign off. I'll be in the background, though. Mm. So Amy here to support. If you need anything, just Thank say you. it well. And, <laughs> so, so um, you just do the presentation for me. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want, but <laughs> from my PR days back in the day. But, yeah. Um, Okay, I'll I'll be around to support any questions. We'll put them to me at the end. Please stick around. There, there'll be um, some offers at the end as well. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it, Amy. So great, right. just in the lovely. Well, thanks very much, Katie, for the introduction and your confidence. I mean, I've done a few of these presentations now, but I I think unless you do them all the time, it doesn't perhaps get any easier. But I'm I'm looking forward to this one because it's a it's a topic that we've been talking about a lot, um, and it's so um, newsworthy as well. So, so today we're looking at the future of PR and AI. Okay, so just a quick introduction. So my name is Amy Hayward Payne. Um, I've been part of the Annika team since 2021. So I've been now in the team for two, just over two years. Um, it's been a great two years for me. Um, and before that, I kind of got 20 plus years, 25 years experience in PR and communications. So Annika, I'm a PR and content account director um, and I specialise in PR strategy um, and the tactical, imp imp can't speak, say, sorry, I can't get my, uh, get into my flow. <laughs> um, tactical implementation of PR, management of campaigns, 
copywriting, which we just talked about. So that's everything from press releases to um, articles and white papers, that kind of thing, um, and digital PR. So not necessarily just writing press releases, but the kind of the digital impl um, side of PR as well. Um, I've got extensive experience with press liaison, everything from national journalists through to the business writers on um, regional publications. Um, and all in between as well, um, generating news stories, um, multi-channel campaigns. So, that's if it's, so that means not just working in a silo in PR, but working with a number of different teams, whether that be SEO, analytics, um, or the paid media team, for example, and not just at Annika, but a pre at other organisations as well. So really kind of really um, got extensive experience of working across a number of different areas and sort of integrating PR um, a, a, along different campaigns and working with different teams to achieve that. Um, at Annika, I manage a range of B2B and B2C accounts. Um, so that's business to business, so trade accounts effectively and business to consumer accounts. Um, and I'm delighted to say I'm a team of three. Um, our team has grown recently. Um, so um, I work alongside Katie Ford. Um, she joined the business a few months ago. And very recently, we welcomed Ebony um, to our team. Um, so I'm delighted to, to, to say that our team is growing, um, that PR is a significant part of what Annika does. Um, and um, that's been recognised by the expansion of the team. So it's fantastic to be you know, working alongside two great professionals. So a little bit about Annika. So if you're not a regular to the webinars, these, these slides just give you a bit of background about, about what the business does. So we're very straightforward. Um, we don't have any egos. There's no egos in the room when we're there. There's lots of loud, loud voices, but there's no ego. Um, but we're all there to support um, businesses' digital ambitions. And we are, in fact, a multi-award winning agency. We're based in the heart of Leicester, um, which is, is a very buzzy part of the town. Um, and we've been established for over 15 years. Um, we have a growing number of staff. We've got um, a really robust client base of over um, 46 clients. And we offer multi-channel services over seven areas. So fundamental to what Annika does is kind of investing in relationships um, with the businesses that we work with and, and those brands that we work with too really working together as partners to kind of understand their business objectives and ambitions to, and to help grow, they help provide their growth and make those businesses succeed. Um, we, because we're a multi-channel agency, we have a number of different services, which I've touched on. Obviously, PR and content is one of those services. Um, and we work across the board with all our different teams to kind of make sure we're offering our clients the very best service um, according to their requirements um, with the aim of different outcomes. So we've got like consultancy service, we're very strategic, um, we have key elements such as lead gen um, services, e-commerce obviously, our client services team hold everything together. So um, I'm part of the, the PR and comms teams as I mentioned. And we are obviously working hard for our clients. And then we have like the client services team that oversee the client relationships and oversee what we do and make sure we're all delivering to, uh, according to the brief and to the uh, client's objective. So they're a really important part of the team as well. You really are in safe hands with Annika. Um, we have um, a number of different um, um, accolades, um, um, including being a premier partner for Google, uh, which is obviously absolutely fantastic. And um, I mentioned earlier that we are award winning. Um, and we're going to talk about um, that um, on this slide down here. Oh, I think that dropped out. Sorry. Um, we've recently won four awards um, and um, delighted to um, within the pay sector. So that, that was fantastic. Um, and we've got we've got experience of working with a huge number of companies and organisations across many industries and not just in Leicester, um, all over the UK. Um, and what's great about Annika is that we are, you know, we have a client base that's um, long term as well. We've got a number of um, long number, a large number of clients that, you know, we look after year after year after year. So which is fantastic and great testament to Anne and the business. So absolutely fantastic. So here's a quick snapshot of the team. You can see Ebony right down there at the bottom on the left hand side. So she's um, the latest addition to the, the PR team. Um, and uh, this just gives you an idea of the structure of the business. 
So moving on to what we're going to talk about today, I'm going to give you an overview about what PR is, um, because I think even though obviously I bang the drum about PR all the time, I think sometimes there's some misunderstanding about what it is. It's useful to just kind of touch on that this morning. And so um, we can have an overview on that. We're going to look at AI in a bit more detail and understand what AI means and what it does. I'm then going to go, I'm throwing in a bit of um, theory into today's um, session. Um, I'm going to talk about a bit of ethic, about ethics and ethical theory, um, particularly related to PR and how, what that means for AI. <clears throat> I'm then going to look at what the next chapter is for PR with the implications around AI. And then we're going to summarise that and then we're going to move to questions. So if you've got those questions, do have a think as we go along and then pop them in and Katie will pull them out and we can have a chat about that at the end. Um, but obviously I'm here both from a PR perspective and content to, to answer any questions you've got. So what is public relations? I've popped this slide in because um, it's important kind of to show how PR integrates um, as a multi in a multi-channel agency. Um, we use um, the POET um, acronym here, which is paid, owned, earned, and technical media. And PR sits within the earned section, so under E. So you'll see it down there, online, traditional and online PR. So that and um, what does that actually mean? Um, well, what does PR mean? Um, so PR, uh, as a sort of two letters, don't actually mean press release. I think some people think that PR that means that what it means is public relations and as a discipline public relations is all about reputation it's what as a result of what you do what you say and others say about you so it's about managing that effectively whether you're doing internally or what we're looking at as external communications here so the CIPR has a definition for that which is um, PR is the discipline which looks after your reputation um, intending to earn understanding and support and influence opinion and behavior it's the planned and sustained effort to establish and maintain goodwill and mutual understanding between an, an organisation and its publics. Um, and I put a, a, made that plural because actually sometimes you don't just have one public, and I'm not talking about the general public here. The public would be the target audience that business um, is targeting. So whether it is um, shoppers going, you know, for, for a retail business. Um, or whether it is um, a trade organisation, um, for example, it that depends on what your focus is, obviously. And I could spend a whole day talking about what I don't know, this definition. I'm not going to because I've got a lot more things to talk about. But you know, this gives you a, a really good oversight of what um, PR actually is. But PR does not mean press release. Press release is one thing you can do within PR, um, but we're talking about public relations here. OK, so um, what does that mean in a bit more detail? It's really PR is a strategic management of comms between a company or organisation and the public um, or its publics. We talked about that. Um, and really importantly, it builds and maintains a positive public image or reputation on behalf of a brand. Um, and we've touched on earned media earlier. Um, PR increases brand awareness through earned media. So what you actually your putting that message out and you're earning the coverage effectively. Um, that's one way of kind of looking at it. Um, it's not paid for, you know, you're not, not you're not, um, it's not advertising. You're not, um, it, it's very different. You're earning it through relationship building with a journalist or an influencer or blogger um, and getting your coverage out there, whether it's online or in traditional sort of print media. PR also very importantly, um, defend your brand reputation during kind of, bad and good times. Um, reputation management is a key element of PR, um, particularly, you know, when there's issues happening um, and to kind of maintain and build a good and positive reputation will stand the business in really good stead at time of crisis or issue because they can kind of live on the back of their reputation. Um, and also, you know, with PR now, thinking about Digital PR is much more around um, sort of building, link building um, through kind of those soft um, SEO um, activities. So PR has definitely moved from that kind of traditional way um, of sort of of just um, just basic copywriting through to now thinking about how we write copy to actually gain links um, for digital media. So things have really shifted in PR. It's been a definite shift change. So I'm not going to play this, but um, I wanted just to kind of highlight the differences between PR and advertising um, when um, and this is a video um, from um, 
um, Aldi, and it's um, basically on the back of the Cuthbert the Caterpillar um, versus Colin the Caterpillar campaign, which has kind of been a running theme for quite a long time for Aldi. Um, and there was um, some great work they did ahead of the coronation when they did a swanky kind of Cuthbert the Caterpillar coronation cake. Um, and I believe the M&S, I actually bought it, um, did a, a Colin the Caterpillar coronation cake too. So it's kind of, they did some advertising for this to kind of promote the fact they had this cake um, and the link is going to be put up for you to have a look at because I'm nervous about playing videos basically <laughs> in a presentation but you get the gist this is on YouTube and it was on obviously um, on TV as well that's advertising on the back of that this is what the PR was so the PR was achieved through the kind of the conflict and the kind of a little war between Aldi um, and M&S on the around this cake. So the advertising is what they promoted, I know, and that was paid for. The PR um, behind it was achieved through the actual campaign itself, and it was across um, both. TV was talking about it as well, but here's some press clippings just talking about the kind of the war between Colin the Caterpillar and Cuthbert the Caterpillar. So you've got everything from the mirror down to like a trade publication, which is the Grocery Gazette. So this is just some examples of how press coverage can be achieved through a campaign led approach. Um, it's on the back of a kind of call advert, um, but obviously it's, it's generated this interesting coverage. And one of the things I was gonna point out that earned um, does for PR is reviews and reports and actually you see in the top right there there's um, an article from the Sun and it is a review that person that journalist is actually testing these cakes so that's a really good way a really, really good example of generating earned media through PR here um, so there's some good examples there um, just again wants to highlight kind of um, earned here and just with my content hat on, um, just wants to highlight that PR really uses content to, to help land messages. Um, and um, there's some examples here of how that's done. So whether it's through sort of generating PR coverage, um, you know, targeting thought leaders and influencers, it might be through earning social likes and shares, all those reviews that we've just seen. There's lots of elements that PR kind of taps into. Um, and is supported by sort of owned communications around things like social, actual physical social posts and web, using a website and placing videos on like YouTube or TikTok. So, again, well, I've done a presentation in the past about content PR um, and the two disciplines, how they mould together and blend together. So we can access that. But this is just a snapshot of that to kind of just highlight the fact that content does very much plays a part within PR itself. So some of the core tactics that we use in PR are around writing. So that might be press releases. We've talked about those a little bit just now. Um, it might be a press statement. It might be a white paper, which might go onto LinkedIn. Um, and it might be an article. These are some examples of kind of the written word that we, as a copywriter within PR, these are some examples of the kind of tactics we might deploy with, um, with within PR. So um, I thought then we'd just so that sort of encapsulates, you know, what PR looks like. We're now going to jump into say, so look at um, AI and give you an overview on that. And specifically, I'm going to focus on um, chat GTP, because I think that's one of the most kind of well-known um, um, AI um, areas that has, people are familiar with. And that's a lot of coverage around chat GTP in the press as well. So, so chat GTP came to light in November um, 2022 when it was launched. And within the first week of that launch, it achieved 1 million users, which is absolutely incredible. And then fast forward to January um, of this year, um, it gained over 100 million global users. So like absolutely phenomenal rise and to the point where when it first launched, I think everyone was able to get on and log, it, log in and kind of had a look around and still play and see what was going on. And then suddenly you couldn't even like get in. You know, it was there's so many people jumping into chat GTP, you couldn't even log on. So absolutely incredible, like this, this very short and fast rise. It had a very um, huge popularity. So what is it? It's a chat tool. So basically you can talk with it. You know, you can have a chat to it and ask it questions. It can write an essay um, and other materials such as press releases. Um, <laughs> and um, but I thought I'd give you a definition of chat GTP, which is um, an artificial intelligence trained to assist with a variety of tasks. 
So thanks to my colleague James Allen, who's actually presenting um, a uh, webinar next week on AI. He's helped input some information on AI here so I get it right, because obviously my um, area of expertise is PR, um, and I'm looking at how actually AI is going to support or not PR. So he's just dropped some information in here just to kind of give that clear definition of what AI actually is. So um, it's very much a computer science field creating intelligent machines with tasks requiring human-like intelligence. It can be categorized as two things, both narrow AI and also general AI. And he'll go into this in a lot more detail next week. So this gives you just a snapshot of, of what this is. Um, so there's techniques include um, machine learning, deep learning um, and computer vision. Um, and it finds applications across a broad range of industries, whether it's sort of healthcare or education or even customer service. How is it being used? Well, you can use AI to help ideate content, engage in critical thinking or brainstorm new product names, for example. It can drive insights from unstructured data. It can assist in coding. Um, and there's also, at the moment, the currently the best use cases with structured information, for example, helping to write Excel formulae um, or um, information where structured data exists, such as writing press releases. Now, I did that. I thought, OK, well, I'll, I'll look into a bit. I'll do I'll give you some examples today about how you could use AI in PR. And I didn't write a press release using AI because um, I just thought it'd be useful just to put a question in. And my question was, how do I actually write a press release? And within just a few seconds, um, ChatGTP had given me not just five points, there's a lot more points here. I just did a quick screenshot of, of what I could grab here. Um, you know, a huge detailed description of actually what um, how to write a press release. So incredible the amount of information um, that I was able to generate in a very short space of time using chat GTP. So I wanted to talk a little bit about ethics because I wanted to discuss whether AI is actually an ethical um, tool to be used with PR. Um, because when you create content for PR, AI can be used to create copy. We've seen that James had an example of press releases can be used in, you know, to be can be created through AI. Um, you input information, you can say, okay, I want to write a press release and it's got all these different elements to it and it's got to have this tone. You could even specify kind of dialect um, and you know you can specify the target audience and you would generate a press release. Now I didn't do that, my example, I just wanted to give you a very basic example using a question, but you can put in these different elements and create a press release. So that poses the question, um, is this the route the PR is going to take? How is it actually going to shape PR? And what are the ethics around this in, using, in terms of using AI for public relations? I want to kind of take a step back to kind of set the scene around ethics in PR. And this is kind of where my PR theory comes in. Now, just so you know, I did a PR degree um, quite a few years ago now, um, and there was a lot of I did a whole module around ethical PR. So I'm not going down that route. Um, I had a friend that did, did a dissertation on it actually, and I was amazed because I think it's an interesting topic, but not to that extent. But interesting to set the scene in terms of where we are now and how why ethics in PR is really important. So sort of going back, PR years and years and years ago sort of struggled with its own reputation. Um, it's once referred to as a dark art of persuasion and manipulation. Um, and indeed during the war, Propaganda was PR, basically. Um, no publicity is bad publicity, is a term you may have heard, and that was very much associated with PR. So the industry really needed to kind of take a look at itself um, and evolve and actually do some work around its own reputation. There was a champion of PR and, and sort of ethics, and his name was Ivy Lee. And in 1906, he shared his principles around the, the public being formed. Um, he really wanted to make sure that um, PR em emphasised truth and was um, a discipline that uh, um, really put out accurate information. Um, and that resulted in where we see PR today in a really positive and worthwhile marketing discipline. You know, the industry really started to move away from become, being known as like spin doctors and uh, that publicity style um, discipline to actually a, a 
a technique that actually can build a business's reputation. It can manage issues. It can be there at times of crisis. You know, it's a completely different ball game to what PR kind of may have been seen years and years and years ago. You know, Ivy League was kind of um, instrumental in shaping that kind of real importance and ethics around PR. So very important guy. And it's so important within PR that the governing body, the Chartered Institute of Public Relations or the CIPR, actually has a definition around PR and adheres and asks the industry to adhere to ethical codes of conduct. So they say ethics includes uh, values such as honesty, openness, loyalty, fair-mindedness, respect, integrity and forthright communication. So where does this leave the PR professional or the PR pro when we face the next chapter of PR with the emergence of tools like um, AI and specifically chat GTP? So the CIPR has done a lot of work around AI and not just recently. What was interesting when I was doing my research for this particular presentation, that they back in like 2018 were talking about the emergence of tools like AI, not to the extent that we see specifics like chat GTP, because obviously it wasn't around at that point. But there was already discussion at that time about um, using AI within PR as a discipline. And they state within this recent um, white paper that PR professionals everywhere must constantly be mindful of the ethical and legal considerations of how they might use AI. Um, and they go on to say, as well as advising their own organisations and clients around their reputation on other implications of wide scale deployment of AI for any other purpose. So what they're saying is here, we, they, practitioners need to be mindful of the impact of AI and what that means in terms of shaping their communications um, both internally and with the people, the publics they work with. They go on to say um, that there should be some consideration and some, um, uh, some, they encourage people to be careful around the use of AI as a PR tool, um, saying what these tools produce is still a statistical average of what they've been trained on. They're not going to produce anything original because they can't by definition. And they finalise by saying AI tools are better at refining than creating. So there's a very clear message here from the governing body of PR that says that almost PR um, AI tools can be used as a research tool um, and they can be refined, but they shouldn't be used. They shouldn't be creating the content that we are using. OK, so it's really useful, and really interesting food for thought. And it's important to remember that AI can be used as that research tool. It can produce information, but it cannot replace a person. It cannot replace that creativity and that um, the, the, the input that a PR professional has. Um, and, and I think that, you know, it's, it's really important to kind of think back to a study like post-pandemic study by YouGov, we show that 91% of customers, um, of sorry, consumers, trusted our media, so PR. They said it built and maintained a positive public image on behalf of a brand. And how is that achieved? Um, it's achieved by building solid relationships with our target press or bloggers or influencers, by identifying news hooks and advising a brand or business to maintain a reputation. Those are things that AI can't do. You know, so what this is saying is if we want to continue maintaining trust and getting our message across, AI is not the route to go down to do that. OK, and we'll, I'll be exploring this in the next few, few slides because I'm going to explore why PR people are really important and why they kind of um, should be um, people should be used, not AI within public relations. So PR as a discipline. If you think about how it's evolved, we sure it was a traditional, very traditional um, activity. I mean, when I started out in PR, I was literally, we'd print out a press release, put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it and post it. Then we'd phone up every single journalist and kind of sell that story in. We have moved on from that, okay? Um, you still have got those techniques, but not sending stuff out with stamps anymore. We might use WhatsApp now, maybe. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it has evolved. Um, other techniques have been deployed. 
But that does not necessarily open a door up to AI. Just because we're evolving as an industry doesn't mean that suddenly we're going to take on board this new tool and say, that's it, that's what we're going to use. That is not the case at all. Because fundamentally with PR, strategy is key. Um, even, you know, things like targeting have been refined. You know, we're not necessarily just focusing on journalists now. We, look, we speak to bloggers and influencers. So there is an evolution, um, but there has to be kind of measured um, growth within that. Um, we know that our focus is online now, very much more so than it was, you know, all those years ago when I started working in PR. Um, and, you know, even to the point where we maximise opportunities in social media. So we evolve, you know, there are they are definitely shift changes in what we do, but the techniques stay the same. And we have to be mindful of honing those great techniques and thinking about what tools we can use. Um, so, for example, we might use social media as a PR tool, but it's not the be all and end all of what we do as a PR professional. And to that end as well, you know, PR and SEO are very much a, a combined approach now. I mean, we have a SEO team at Annika, but we work very closely with them to have a blended approach for PR and content. One of our objectives now is to actually link build as part of our PR efforts. We use keywords in press releases. So we still write our press releases using the kind of techniques of who, what, where, when, how, how and why. But we also think about on where are those keywords are going to go. What are those keywords that we should be putting into that press release to actually make sure we are providing effective links um, and being on message for our client? So we evolve. And fundamentally, you know, it's all about building credibility. That's what PR does. It's about credibility and trust. We think about that, going back to that definition, it's about building mutual respect and relationships, building credibility to our target or with our target audience. That has not changed. You know, from days of Ivy Lee through to where we are today, building credibility has been a mainstay of PR. You know, it's our the PR pros kind of bread and butter. That's what we do. But the message has to be right. And it also has to be delivered to the right contact. And those contacts have to be credible. Um, and it's, you know, a really powerful tool. But it's only most effective when the most applicable outlets and tools are used. So I think we really have to bear that in mind. We think about AI and all the great things that AI can do. Actually, I would question, can it deliver credibility? Can it deliver the right message at the right time to the right person? I want to touch on reputation management within PR now because AI can't replace a need for human interaction and managing reputational issues. AI is not able to make a comment. AI is not able to fix a problem and AI is not able to be a spokesperson. So when the Ritz Hotel um, told an applicant their hairstyle um, type was banned, that made headline news. And this is just one snippet. I mean, I could have littered the page here with all the coverage um, that was generated, not achieved. So I don't think the bits felt would felt have felt they had achieved coverage. It was generated. Um, very negative um, for them. You know, massive reputation disaster for them. Huge issues management, massive crisis. AI can't sort that out, but their PR person can. OK. And on a kind of positive note around reputation, um, I want to give some other recent examples, and I think uh, we all are familiar with this. Um, Prince and Princess of Wales have really kind of leveraged um, the positivity on the back of the coronation to build their own reputation. There is a PR campaign here, guys. It is not something they just go out and choose to do because they're nice people. I'm sure they might be nice people. But there is a PR directive here about building the reputation of this family, of these two people. They are very much now in the public eye because of the position of um, the Prince of Wales's father. And so they are proactively going out and seeking really new positive um, situations to place themselves in. So, for example, post-coronation, there was kind of volunteer day on the Monday and they went and did some, some great stuff with um, the scout, scouting organisation. They've met um, people at garden parties as part of the kind of a PR branding exercise. And then only last Sunday, um, uh, the Prince Princess of Wales was featured in the um, UK's entry on the Eurovision Song Contest playing the piano. I mean, it's not a coincidence, right? This is PR at its finest. It's reputation management, it's building positivity. And if you think about it as well, they're building it to a number of different audiences here too.
So you've got a family audience with the Cubs. You've got those people who are really into their kind of pop music and um, interested in uh, popular culture with the Eurovision Song Contest and perhaps an older age group with the Garden Party. So it's very well instigated, orchestrated. It's a PR campaign. AI can't do that. PR builds relationships. Um, it builds two-way beneficial relationships with uh, a target audience, with the publics. Um, an effective PR through great content, we talked about content earlier, helps create new partnerships and targeted relationships. Um, that's something that AI can't do. AI, AI can't um, pitch a story to a journalist. AI can't work with a blogger. That is something that's done by a person. That's by, done by someone who's got a narrative, who can actually talk through different angles, who knows the right materials to send and how to kind of position it to a particular contact. PR is all about thought leadership. We talked about that a little bit earlier on and, and the, uh, LinkedIn um, being an essential um, and relevant thought leadership tool. Um, and thought leadership, for example, marries PR and content, um, particularly when an individual has their own opinions and focus. That's not an AI, a, a AI job. That's something that someone's doing and pushing out there um, on a, the right channel at the right time with that person's message. PR and the PR Pro develops news hooks. So um, these are used by journalists and editors to determine relevance of a story. You've got to have a great news hook, you know, otherwise that story is not going to land. Um, so, you know, we might ask whether as a PR pro, is it an interest to their audience? How are we going to pitch it in? Do you know, are they going to cover it? You know, what, is this story that I'm pitching to this particular journalist going to get great coverage? Um, is it going to have um, great value? Um, you know, and I think, these are things that AI cannot do. And there's just seven points here around the different things that you would you know, think about when you're pitching in that story and think about news hooks around it. And again, I could do a whole presentation around this. I'm not going to, because I've sort of only got a few minutes left, but you know, it's what I'm trying to say here, this is not a task that AI can do. It's a task that a person, a PR pro does. So PR, it's personal, right? It's a narrative. It's done by a person. It's it's something that um, is unique. It's it sets the scene. It takes a lot of factors into consideration. Um, PR shares news with the right people and at the right time, actually, as well. You know, it's it's making sure you land a story at exactly the right time. PR, the PR pro, builds relationships. You can't build a relationship with an AI bot. Um, it might be able to do some customer service um, work, um, but it's chatbot. You know, it, it's not actually asking actually how someone is and have they had a good experience in their call or whatever it might be. It's it, they're just answering black and white questions. Um, there's no relationship building. PR is amazing. The fact that it promotes the good and manages the bad. You know, we talked about crisis management. We talked about issues management there. That is not something that AI can actually do. That's something that's led by the PR professional. Um, the PR professional shapes a message. The PR professional sets an agenda. The PR professional knows what news to present at what time. The PR pro seeks out story and um, sets a brand and business apart. That is not something that AI can do. And there has been, although we hear all the great stuff about AI, there has been negativity around the use of AI um, as a tool. And these are just some headlines I pulled out here. Um, one example of how it's been used negatively is students using it for um, essay writing. Um, so they're inputting information and essays get written. Well, potentially there's going to be lots of essays on the same, uh, written the same way if it's on one topic. Um, so that's one piece of negativity. Um, then the head of um, energy um, business, Octopus, said that AI is better than people. And he was talking in the context of a customer service team here. And it's that sort of chatbot um, scenario. So that's not great news, is it? Taking jobs away. But there's a number of commentators that agree, uh, specifically um, Professor Stuart Russell, who was, has advised Downing Street and the White House in his past. He said he was frustrated that ministers have argued in favour of light touch regulation of the AI industry. And actually, on the back of that, this morning, I was reading that the UK Prime Minister 
um, has actually taken um, the seriousness of AI on board and has today announced that there's going to be um, some work done on further regulation of AI. So that's literally hot of the press news. The landscape around AI is changing by the minute. You know, it changes all the time. So that is literally, you know, that's been announced today. So it is shifting all the time. So I think we need to retake AI, not with a pinch of salt. It's an evolving, growing, changing, facing, face to, you know, every single day. There is no doubt it's here to stay. You know, it, it's there are some ways that it's been really positively used. And I think it will evolve in the same way that we've seen traditional PR evolve into really tangible digital function that incorporates SEO and different techniques now. But I think um, what's not going to change is the fundamental PR techniques that we have and the skill as people in creating campaigns to support news and announcements. Um, PR is all about people. It's about communication. It's about narrative. It's person driven. So in my opinion, I believe that AI and PR could be used as a, a research tool. Um, I believe that it could support content development, um, but that should be supported with transparency with the invaluable human touch. I don't think you're ever going to get away from having the personal touch within PR. You need to look at a range of tools, a suite of tools, whether it's for media monitoring, whether it's to um, analytics, whether it's to using SEO um, tools to support your work. But ultimately, the PR pro is a person, um, and that's the most important thing, and that's the way I see PR going. It's still going to be a human-led um, discipline. So there you go. <laughs> I really enjoyed that, Amy. Thank you very much. I think, um, you know, there's so much that I I think like just being a human being, you know, and the experiences we all have and understanding different cultures. And I sometimes think, you know, how far, you know, AI will go. Like uh, but sometimes I use it and it's very, uh, you know, Americanized, uh, say, in um, use of language against like American versus British uh, language. Yeah, and, like yeah. that. and then even concepts um, I've seen recently for like, potential templates you know they wouldn't work in our culture over here at all it just wouldn't wouldn't mesh so it's it's quite quite interesting you know um it's kind of maybe i i take it as kind of potentially use it for the things to quicken up um the day to day but i think in terms of the core principles of pr and yeah. even the idiosyncrasies of being a human you can't you can't quite pin it down you yeah. know yeah. Because remember as well, when you are writing for a particular brand or business, there's a tone of voice. You know, there's a kind of brand guidelines. It's we would use these words, not those words. It, it might be um, this is how we like to lay things out, whatever it might be. That is not something that AI is going to be able to do, no matter what instructions you can pop in the box. Um, and then when you're taking that story and you're pitching it out, you know, you you might not, when you're contacting your journalist, you might use the headline, you might use paragraph four. You might, there's not, you know, AI is not going to do that for you. AI is not going to identify what pieces of information that particular journalist, journalist is interested in. It's not going to change a press release uh, to be relevant for, for the local business media. It's not going to change it for like your weekly local paper. It's not going to change it to be relevant for the science writer of the Daily Telegraph. You know, so there's so much that the PR professional does and will continue to do. That's not going to change. Um, yeah, I just think I we have to be aware of AI and, you know, it, and it's evolving. You know, there's so mm -hmm. much that's evolved, but like anything, you know, it will be part of a tool, a suite of tools rather than an essential thing that we're going to use, in my opinion. Um, one question here, how do you get PR experience to shine with PR employers? Which qualifications matter nowadays or um is cpd more relevant and up to date uh i think so, when i did a pr degree um and i was like <laughs> third year it's a third year of of it in you know being up and running um so it's very early days and i'm sure things have changed um since then um i would say for me personally yes a relevant degree is great but i would say industry experience for me trounces everything i mean i'd done work with bbc radio northampton i'd worked at a local press agency um even before i did my degree 
um, because even to get onto my degree was really hard. So even those things helped me to get onto my degree at that time. Um, and I think subsequently I was doing other pieces, bits of voluntary work, just to kind of keep that experience going. But I think on ongoing training is important. I think it's, you know, you don't just stop learning, do you? Whatever age you are, whatever experience you No, I think that's so true. Yeah. It's always ongoing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and there's a range of great courses. And obviously we offer Annika, you know, some great training as well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think it's about keeping your eyes and ears open to what might be relevant for you. And also think about if you want to go down a particular route of PR, say you might want to specialise in... Um, oh, I don't know, retail PR, there might be some training in the retail sector that might be relevant for you just to hone your own skills away from like being that, that professional set of skills almost. You yeah. know, there might be some um, additional ones that might be worth looking into, I would say. Um, so, but I would say you never stop learning, keep your eyes open to what's out there in terms of training and, and keep at it, whether it's stuff you're doing as part of your job and you can do it also on the job training or you're paid to do it when you're at work or it's whether it's stuff you can do at home in the evenings, at weekends, just do some extra top up. You never stop. So, and it's also, I'd say the webinars that we do at Annika are a brilliant tool as well, Katie, in terms of your learning experience. So for example, I've touched on what is AI and what, what it mm -hmm. does. Now next week, James's presentation around AI is going to be so different to that. It's going to be a lot more technical. Yeah. And so the old type for everyone. So um, we've got. Yeah. Um, well, I'll be listening to that. I'll, I'll be learning from that. You know, yeah, that's of... SEO and content synergies with AI. I'm really looking yeah. forward to that one. I have to say, I know, it's going to be amazing. Mm. So yeah, so that's going to be something I want to listen to and learn from. You know, as well, even though I've got my opinions, which you've all heard <laughs> today. Well, I just. Um, <laughs> I've just actually, you did mention training and obviously Anna could do uh, run a digital marketing uh, boot camp and we do that for D2N2, um, which is basically Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire, Leicestershire, Lincolnshire, Rutland. Um, if I've missed out a county, uh, forgive me for that. Um, <laughs> and um, also New Anglia, which is Norfolk and Suffolk, they start on the 23rd of May um we'll have the induction on the 23rd of may and then um, places are tight there's limited spaces today really but just letting you know about it and if you want to sign up even if you didn't get on this cohort the next one will be like in september so i've actually posted that um on there i'm just also going to share um just where all our resources and webinars are just so you've got all of that and then um as a big thank you um, for what um, Amy's just presented, I'm just going to put this out there as well. If you could um, give Amy a review, it's really, really helpful to us as an agency. Um, I think you put your heart and soul into this one, Amy, and we do appreciate it. And I'm also going to put in a Google one. <laughs> um, the Google ones, um, if you've watched um, Brad talk about local SEO especially, they are brilliant for us. So, um, yeah, we'd really appreciate it. And there's a bit of an internal competition. And I know Amy doesn't always look competitive, but secretly she really is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But um, I think we've covered all the questions. And James Allen in the background has just been smashing out the answers. So Has he? Oh, yeah, fantastic. He's, just, he's added, gone on above and beyond like James always does. So you oh, need to come next week. You need to be there. Well, well there was a big that. shout out to James for supporting on the sides because I didn't want to. I thought if I do it wrong, I'm going to be told off. <laughs> Oh, oh, no, nice no. I think, um, do you know um dan ricardo made you know comp like interesting comments about you know the calculator coming um you know into mathematics and how times change and education changes with it and my husband's actually a teacher so i know all about like how education are kind of looking at ai in the future um but yeah, it's it's just really interesting. You think, you know, we didn't have dishwashers, like you know, technology evolves and it's kind of human beings evolve. So it's it's interesting. And I think you've done a good job on here, um, Amy, because it just shows you still need the human being from a, a kind of um critical critical um perspective. And um I don't I don't ever believe like AI will spot the, the award winning kind of PR concepts. I genuinely think that. But I think if you've got day-to-day -day jobs where, um, you know, it can help quicken 
certain areas up then mm. you'd, be, you'd be a fool not to use it you know whether that's exactly. right you no know, here's what you know five bullet points about my career write me a quick biography you know that kind of stuff as well so yeah and those things like so yesterday it, this is just a very recent example we had an ideation session between um the well we do on a regular basis the pr and seo team and um there were some amazing like ideas coming through from different elements parts of the team though so, curveball things that just really landed well and I was just like we said you know this is not this is not an AI task you know this is where PR professionals um can come into their own in terms of developing ideas and concepts so you know that's just yesterday um and you're never going to get AI to do that I think you know we need to monitor AI I'm not discounting things but you know they are all those things I talked about like the reputation management selling a story knowing the content you know knowing a strategy the ideation session whatever it might be they are pr tasks and, mm -hmm. and skills that we have developed over a number of years you can't just go out and do it. It, it you've got to have huge amounts of you know experience to do that um and know what you're doing and to make it land well story land well so that's where we come in so just to um you know uh, re restate really that james allen is here next week and um, talking own content synergies with AI. I'm really looking forward to that one. So I think it kind of builds upon what we've done today and it will look at things from a different perspective and more about, you know, um, kind of all the um, intricacies of SEO and, and, and AI and how they, you know, correlate really. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, and I think that's it for today. If um, Again, if you can uh, leave a review for Amy. It's much appreciated. She has worked really hard, and I do appreciate it, Amy. And I know, um, you know, it can be nerve wracking sometimes to do these webinars. So I do. Yeah, I had a bit of my voice was a little bit wobbly at the beginning, so but you had to just get into the flow of it. I think there was one week, and I did three live things. I think one was uh, a conference. It was. was um, it was you did um, Leicester Business Festival, didn't you? Yeah. And then yeah. there was there was another one soon after, and then you did the webinar. I yeah, in one week. And by the time yeah. it came to webinars, it's like, oh, whatever. <laughs> but you're yeah, like, I know it's fine. It's like anything, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I'm even, I'm back at doing fitness classes, and I, you know, I feel very different. Um, you know, trying to do certain kind of balancing movements at the moment. Yeah, it's a different skill set. Yeah. I'm a communicator, but it's a different skill set mm -hmm. in a way. And I think it was like anything. The stuff I do at work is day to day, but day you do it all the time. Yeah, um, yeah. but you don't always present all the time but actually i do well, we, we appreciate it we appreciate that you did it and i, I, well, you I know, think everyone's great and you. to do it it's really good and everyone gets a chance to um talk about their own areas and to explore different topics i mean and, and different concepts and that's that's the great thing about it isn't it that we can get all our opinions off our chest <laughs> yeah, no um i'm just putting a few emails in there as well but yeah Thank you for today. I'm not, we're finishing a little bit earlier, but only by eight minutes. So, uh, yeah, and anyone <laughs> catching up, you know, um, feel free to drop us a line, inquiries at annika.co.uk. Um, you know, if there's anything um, you're looking for, we're very good at audits. We're very good at kind of, um, you know, looking at companies and, you know, giving the integrated approach of digital marketing and consulting. Yeah, and well, sorry, with PR now, we've got, you know, we've grown like this bigger team um, and, you know, we've got great so sites. Both. So, you know, we are, we're really busy, but, you know, we, we you know, there's opportunities to support businesses with their PR. So I think it's a question of, you know, if you're interested in some additional support, whether it's kind of one off projects or longer term retainers, you know, we can flex according to a business needs. You know, we've got that yeah, yeah. We're really agile so yeah, you know. yeah yeah you're a very talented team and you've got such a wealth of experience from just like the sectors you've worked across just individually it's yeah, amazing it's what we've amassed really so no, definitely get in touch if um you need um you know any digital marketing um you know uh, work doing cool. really so yeah i think that's it for today so um thanks very much and thank well you done, Amy. and see you all next week i'm really looking forward to it and thanks again james allen much appreciated yeah, thanks, james. okay see bye. You then. bye bye, bye.